morning yoga friends we're going to start out today on our back with um, a belt if you can just have a belt handy right now it can just be off to the side but go ahead and come to a lying position and I'm just going to walk you through a couple breath um, exercises so I'm going to sit so that I can be upright and you're going to be just flat on your back in a comfortable way so closing your eyes, following your breath. So when we follow the breath, notice there's no effort, there's no force. We're just gonna follow the breath, just letting the breath naturally do its thing, breathing freely, inhaling, pausing, exhaling, pausing. So taking that simple journey and just see where this exercise takes you. So you're just noticing the actual in-breath the pause between the in and the out breath, taking that full out breath and then noticing the pause between the out breath and the in breath. And once you start to focus on that, it's kind of intriguing how the body really um, responds without, you know, it's, it's involuntary, right? But we can really focus on that and just follow the, the um, intelligence of the body. So just taking the simple journey to see where it takes you our breath is continually rising and falling, ebbing and flowing, entering and leaving our bodies. This full body breathing is a symphony of both the powerful and the subtle movements that massage our inner organs, oscillate our joints, and alternately tone and release all the muscles in the body. Additionally, the breath is the bridge between the body and the spirit. The moment we close our eyes and bring our attention to the breath, there is a positive psychological effect that commences. The heart rate slows, the cardiopulmonary stress is decreased. There's also a decrease in metabolic activity, blood sugar and lactate levels muscle tension and skin conductivity. The positive changes create an increased sense of well-being. So as you lay here, continue to receive the gift of the breath. And today let's look at our yoga practice as a gift, not an obligation or one more thing to do but truly as a gift. And I ask you the question, how comfortable are you at receiving gifts? I think a lot of us um, are very good, comfortable, um, very generous at um, giving, achieving, maybe pushing a little harder. But can you offer yourself, your mind, and your body, and your soul the gift of presence, time, compassion, and perception without shame. And maybe there's even a little playfulness in receiving the gift of this time for yourself. As you inhale, breathe in the gift of peace. As you exhale, let go of the tension that might be held up somewhere in the body or the mind. On the inhale, breathe in acceptance. Exhaling, letting go of judgment. Inhaling joy. Exhaling frustration. Inhaling laughter. Exhaling tears. Inhaling wisdom. Exhaling ignorance.
spaciousness. Exhaling harshness. Inhaling openness. Exhaling constriction. setting an intention for this class today, giving yourself this gift. And then from this lying position, bring the feet down and the knees up and begin to rock back and forth on the pelvis. So it's very subtle movements. You may not be able to see it here, but I'll give you a little guide. I'll use my hands to show you. As you inhale, lift the low back. So you're pushing down more through the base of the pelvis, lifting the top of the pelvis. And then as you exhale, lift the base of the pelvis, push down the top of the pelvis. And go back and forth here. This is a lying cat cow. We have done this from a kneeling position, standing position yesterday. A lot of times from all, yeah, the all fours kneeling position or even seated. So lying is a little more subtle because you're working with the ground here but opening up the back of the spine or the pelvis. Good, and then hugging the knees into the chest and exhaling, pushing the knees away. Go back and forth here with the breath and actually exhaling, put, when the knees come in, they can actually help expel the air. So you can try to reverse the breath here by pushing out and then breathing in as you push away. Which actually is the same thing we were just doing on the floor a moment ago with the feet on the floor. Exhaling as the back flattens. Yes. Good, do one more round there. And then place the feet back down on the ground Walk them in close to your hips, feet parallel and hip width apart, and then walk the shoulders underneath you. Press the hands down, lift the hips up to bridge pose. Coming onto the tops of the shoulders, pushing the feet away, scooping the tailbone. Deep inhale. Good, pushing down through all four corners of both feet now. Lift and separate the toes so you can feel the ball of the big toe, the inner heel, the ball of the little toe, and the outer heel. Good. Stay here for another cycle of breath. And then gently bring the hips back down to the earth. This time grabbing the kneecaps and we're going to circle the knees around in a counterclockwise position. Feel what's happening to the low back as you do this and then go the opposite direction. Good. Bring the feet to the floor. Straighten the left leg out. Bring the right foot in and hook the strap around the ball of the big, or the ball of the foot. So not on the arch, don't let it slip down here. We want to stay active by pressing the ball of the foot into the strap. So notice you can point and flex the foot. But what we're gonna concentrate on here is, is extending all the way up the leg and kind of finding that middle point of pointing and flexing called flinting. We're gonna flint into the strap. So the foot is, the ball of the foot is pressing into the strap. It's not all the way pointed and it's not all the way flexed. It's somewhere in, in the middle. So we've got action going on here pulling the strap down, but extending the leg back up into the strap. So there's a little action going on here. Feel the action even in the left leg. Those toes are lifted and separated. That leg is active. And then notice the difference if you just went passive. So everything kind of went limp. And then do the opposite again here. We're extending out like we're trying to make the legs longer on both sides. I could sure stand for some longer legs, so let's give that a try as if we can add inches 
to the length of the legs here. And then grab a hold as close as you can to the right foot and slowly, just feel the nuance here as you go slowly out to the side, you're gonna decide, you've got control with the strap here, how far out to the side do you go? Maybe it comes all the way to the floor, maybe it doesn't. Yesterday we talked about props. You could actually put something under the foot here if you like. You can hover by just holding on to the strap. Now I like to, to um, choke up as much as I can, so I'm using my whole arm here for support. If I, if I hold on right here, my bicep is really having to do a lot of the work and it feels just a little more open to me if I choke down as much as I can. But of course, if your hamstrings are a little tighter, yours might look like this. Like, my, see my arm is still straight and I'm not choked up as much to the, to the foot because I don't have maybe the flexibility. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's body is different. So work, work with what is, is feeling right for you. Coming out to the side here and then work on extending through both arms, both legs, and up through the crown of the head. Again, if that right arm is bent, it's really hard to extend it because you have too much slack in the strap. Good, come back up to center. Grab the strap now with the left hand. Same thing, the farther you choke up, you can always easily let the strap come through as you need to, but it's hard to choke back up when you get all the way over to the left. So here we're gonna work on extending the right leg long, and then slowly, now the left foot is gonna rotate over onto the little toe side. So we're not fighting here in the pelvis, we're letting the whole pelvis shift over. And then again, coming slowly to the side, moving our things out of the way, and then opening the right hand out to the right and turning and looking over to the right. Now this might feel really intense first thing this morning. Notice because we're gonna end the class in the same posture. So you might be able to feel the difference. Lift and engage the toes on both feet. Actively press into the strap with the right leg and see if you can move the right hip away from this right shoulder. So you're moving the hip down towards your left foot. That kind of intensifies the posture for sure. Keep breathing. Notice if you kind of start holding your breath because it's intense. Feel free to back off as you need to to create the intensity that you desire this morning. Coming back up to center, release the strap and Bring your right foot out next to your left and just feel the difference between your whole right side and the whole left side. Take one more deep breath in. Noticing where that breath is moving. To me, it feels like the breath is moving all the way through my right side. Left side, not so much. So maybe you feel something a little bit different. There's no right or wrong here. Okay, so keeping the right leg long, strap up around your left. And I like having both hands choked up as, as far as I can up toward the foot. Lift in and separate the toes on both feet. Elongate both legs. Again, for you, your hamstring um, flexibility may require your foot to be here. It really doesn't matter. What matters is if you try to push it too far to make it look like something, um, look like something from the outside that you're trying to mimic. And we're trying to just follow the rhythm and the harmony in the body. So wherever the placement of that left leg needs to go, please do that. Extending through both legs, now grab the strap with the left hand as close up to your foot as you can. But notice you can slowly let that strap slither through your hand if you need a little more slack. Extending the left leg out to the left, the right arm out to the right. So now you're extending through both arms, both legs, and up through the crown of the head. Feel the rhythm of the breath in this extended posture. Come back up to center. Take the right hand on the strap. Watch the right foot is gonna come over onto the little toe side and I'm sending the energy out the left leg 
and moving the left hip away from the left armpit, you decide how far over you come. Even if you're right here, if you can extend out through the left arm, that may be your extension. That's completely fine. Notice the nuances as you slowly come down toward the earth or wherever your landing place might be. <sighs> Let the breath continue to flow, even though you might be feeling quite a bit of tension. I mean, you're, you may feel that in a different place than I am, but mine is kind of right around this left glute, the left hip, the left hip flexor. So breathe into those tense spaces. See if we can dissipate some of that extra energy. One more breath in, and then a full breath out. And then release, bring the foot back up to center. And one more time now, we're gonna move the strap out to the side, let the legs come next to each other and notice now where that energy is pulsating. If one side feels longer than the other, or do we have kind of a matching set of legs here? You may even feel that energy pulsating in your hands, up into the arms and into the heart. That's a wonderful way to start end day with that, with that posture. Okay, so now uh, I had to just pop up here to see my notes, but you're gonna stay lying. And we're gonna do one more thing here, hugging the knees into the chest. Um, this is a posture I love to do. I think it's just a gentle twist, taking the knees out to the right. I like to place my right hand on my left knee here, where you can extend both arms out long. They can even be into a cactus position um, if that doesn't feel right. Some people have a hard time getting their hands to the floor in this position. You can always set a block underneath your hands so that you can fully relax into the block or extend your arms out, turning and looking over the left shoulder. Release your body into the earth, letting gravity do the job here with this twist. Bring the knees back up to center, and then the knees go over to the left, and the right arm out stretches to the right. And again, if you need a block to support you here, it would look like this. Yesterday we talked about using blocks even underneath your knees or between your knees. Um, that's also another way you could do this twist. Whatever works for you here. Good, coming back to center. Let's roll over onto the right side and come up this way. So from a standing position, interlace your hands, push the palms forward, round the upper back, and then lift up toward the sky, leaning over to the right, push down more through the left foot, ah, stretching through that whole left side, inhaling back to center and exhaling over to the left, push down more through the right foot, feeling the length come into the right side. Good, inhale, release. So grab your block and come to the front of your mat and we'll go around for a couple sun salutations. So I know that I, I said this was a lying practice <laughs> and it is, we're gonna start out lying and we're gonna end up lying. But let's do a little bit of movement in between and it makes the lying feel even better. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold over, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Ah, exhale, release down. Inhale, uh, take the right leg back. And the left knee, we wanna bend that left knee. Remember that knee comes right over the ankle. And up on fingertips, or you can always use blocks if that, if you don't, readily come to the earth you can lift the earth up towards you with the block otherwise onto your fingertips here inhaling straightening the front leg as much as as you can you may not be able to straighten it all the way and we want to keep a little bend in the knee anyway and then as you exhale come forward inhale back exhale forward One more time, inhale, good, and exhale.
exhale. Plant, plant the hands down, spread the fingers wide, push down through the fingertips, and step back to down dog. Push even more into the fingertips so the palm of your hand is still pressing into the earth, but not you're not dumping there. That can cause some wrist issues. So you want to be on a level surface here. Push down through the ball of the big toe by lifting and separating the toes. Drag the heels back. Reach the heart toward the floor. And bring the right foot up between your hands. So same thing, the knee is right over the ankle. And then we inhale back. Ah, exhale forward. Good, two more just like this. Inhaling back, still pressing down through the whole front foot and the ball of the back foot. Good, and one more. Maybe we did one more extra on this side. I lost count. Good, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. And exhale, release back down. Using the block as you need to, bending the knees if you need to. But let's all of us bend and straighten your legs, moving the hips side to side here. Bringing a little dynamic movement here. First thing into forward fold. Good, bring your hands to your hips, elbows to the sky, inhale and rise. Inhale, lift the arms up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Again, using the block if you need to. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, down. This time, step the left leg back to deep lunge. So the front, the, the right knee is right over the front ankle. Move your hips here side to side. So the next time you come to the right, stay there. Walk your hands up your right leg and then scoop the tailbone down and notice how that helps give you the lift so you can rise up. You can always stay here, but see if you can find the freedom by moving the hips out to the right, scoop the tailbone down, and then inhale, interlace your hands, reach up toward the sky, keeping the back leg straight and bending more into the front knee. Gently lean over toward the right. Staying with the breath here. If that's too intense, back off. Good, reach the hands down. Step back to top of a push-up position. Drop the knees if you need to. Otherwise, bend the elbows, keep them tucked in by your side, lowering down. Shoulders rotate up and away from the floor. Walk the feet out and press the tops of the feet down. As you drag the hands back, lift the heart. Exhale, lower. One more time, inhale, lift, press the tops of the feet down. Good, and push back to child's pose. What I love about this practice is that balance of effort and surrender. Ah, releasing now into the earth. Curling the toes under, lift up to down dog. Bend one leg and then the other. And lift the left leg up toward the sky. Swing the leg through and up between your hands. Or you can always drop the knees down, reach back around, grab that foot. And then we're gonna straighten the back leg again. Move the hips here side to side. When you come out to the left, stay there. Walk your hands up the left leg, and then watch what happens as you scoop the tailbone. You orient the pelvis facing forward. Inhale, interlace the hands, palms toward the sky. Straighten the back leg, bend into the front knee. Ah, lean over toward the left. So you have control over how far you go. Listen to the body on the inside. We're not pushing toward any external goal here. It's an internal movement. Lift 
within the heart and lungs, reaching the back heel back. Good, reach the hands down, step forward, forward fold. Hands to the hips, elbows to the sky, inhale and rise. Okay, grab your strap and place the strap right over the front of your legs and then create that long side body, rotate the shoulders back and like you're trying to rip your strap, pull the strap back, draw the ribs down and, and back in front keep the heart lifted, draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Good, and then inhale, lift the strap up to the sky. And if it feels comfortable for you, just let the strap slither between your hands, giving you a little more slack, bring the strap back behind you. If you run into a shoulder issue, please just stay in the front here. We're gonna exhale down, inhale up, Exhale down, whether you go down and back or down, back down in front, it doesn't matter. You're listening to your body. So a lot of times I've had shoulder issues going on and I know the more I push it, the worse it gets. Get a little inflammation in there and you need to just let that dissipate before you try pushing beyond your comfort zone. We should never be pushing beyond that, right? Good, when you come back down, um, now we're gonna take the strap. In fact, you know, maybe an easy way to do this, we're going to strap up around the meaty part of our shins. Step about hips width apart and then cross the strap in front and notice as I'm strapping now I'm, I'm pulling my shins together and then lift and separate the toes. Push down through the ball of the big toe, the inner heel, the ball of the little toe and the outer heel. So now my shins are pretty level, but as I pull, my shins come together and I'm rolling on the inner edge of my foot. From the, you're gonna bend the knees now. From the inner thighs, begin to pull or push out, I should say. So now the foot begins to level, the shins become even and this, you were pulling against the strap. So try that again. So pull, so you're crisscrossed in front, so you're pulling this, your hands apart, but that's pulling your shins together. And then from the inner thigh, so from way up here, you're from the pelvis, you're moving that energy down and out of the thighs and the feet level. Can you feel that all the way up in your hip? Now hold that tension of the strap and begin to come into a forward fold. Ah, and relax the strap. And then come into your forward fold. You can do that again, bend your knees. Imagine now the strap pulling the shins in and push out with the inner thighs. Ooh, maybe you've created a little opening there. Good. So coming to the front of your mat now, if you're not already there, in your forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Ah, exhale, release down. And then inhale, step the right leg back. Drop that back knee down. Wiggle the left foot forward a couple inches and then pull the toes back, dragging the heel back isometrically. The heel's really stuck to the mat. Move the hips out to the left and then drag the left hip back, right hip forward. Reach the crown of the head forward. These toes are lifted and engaged, pushing through the ball of the big toe. Good, plant that foot back drag it back the few inches maybe that you took it forward and then inhale lift the arms up to the sky staying with the breath here inhale <sighs> exhale good one more inhale good bring your hands down to the mat step back to that push-up position again elbows in lower down this time what we're gonna do, I have to make sure I'm not out of the screen here, is come up onto spider fingers. So the tops of the feet press down, elbows up toward the sky, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower, look under the right armpit. Inhale to center, and 
exhale over to the other side. Good, inhale back to center and lower, stack the forearms one on top of the other and rest the forehead. Bring the hands next to the chest, curl the toes under, lift up to down dog, and bring your inner thighs back, scoop the tailbone. It's a very subtle thing from this posture. It's very subtle movement, but see, remember when we were on our back and we did the pelvic tilt? See if you can kind of create that in your down dog. So we're lifting the sitting bones and scooping the tailbone. Just find that subtle difference here. Then we're gonna, uh, let's see, right leg up to the sky and swing that foot all the way up and through. Drop the back knee down or simply drop both knees, reach around, grab the right foot. Wiggle the foot forward and then pull back. Take the hips out to the left, or the, let's see, this is to the right, sorry, the hips out to the, to the right and then pull the right hip back and left hip comes forward so you've aligned your pelvis, pushing through the ball of the big toe. We're trying to create this long line of energy and then the upper body kind of comes up and out of that. So we wanna keep the spine long and tall, reaching through the crown of the head and then we can lower, but we're not trying to, you don't have to worry about curving in, right? There's a difference there. Keep the spine long, staying with the breath. Good, and then draw that foot back a little bit. So the knee is right over the ankle and inhale, lift the arms up toward the sky. Dragging the back knee forward and the front heel back. Good, bring your hands down to the mat, straighten the back leg, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Bring the hands together at the heart here and pause. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, come down, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale down. This time, step the left leg back again. And swivel the back heel down. Bring your forearm, your right forearm to the right thigh. Move the inner thighs back, scoop the tailbone. Allow that to help you open. Bring the left arm up to the sky and over the ear. So feel the steadiness, the firmness of the legs. The feet are equally pushing into the earth. So much so the legs stay there as you cartwheel your hands up to warrior two, looking out over the right hand. So you can always reposition, moving the thighs back, scooping the tailbone. The, 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 the movements are not meant to be stuck. There's meant to be a little fluidity. So moving how you need to, so you can feel the firmness of the, of the legs, the lower body, the integration of the tailbone and the abdomen and the mid body, and then the upper body is buoyant, lifted and open. Reverse that, take the right or the left hand down, the left leg, right arm up. Step the back foot forward. Reach the right fingertips out to the right diagonal. You can use a block here. I would steady the block or just use the ground. Back up here so I don't go out of the camera. And then lift the back leg, left hand to the left hip and open the hips so the hips are stacked. We talked about this yesterday. Lifting and separating the toes on the lifted leg, kicking them forward just a little bit so you can take the belly button back. Left arm can reach up to the sky. Staying here, or the challenge is always to bend both knees, grab the ankle, and open. That's just the extra challenge. Pushing the foot into the hand.
step that foot back to deep lunge, back to down dog, and left foot forward, swiveling the back heel down. We'll go to the other side. Left forearm on the left thigh. Move the inner thighs back. Rotate the right shoulder back. The right hand can come up to the sky or over the ear. Finding freedom in the breath here, steadiness in the legs. Cartwheel your hands up to warrior two. Moving the thighs, so we've got that fluidity, moving the thighs back, scooping the tailbone, rotating the shoulders back. We're not holding our breath, we're very fluid with the breath, right? From the gift of the breath we talked about at the beginning of class, let that breath still move through you. Right hand down the right leg, left arm up to the sky. Good, and then take the left fingertips. Again, I'll move back a little bit here. Left fingertips to the diagonal of your little toe. Shift your weight onto your left foot and your left hand, lifting the right leg. Kick the right toes forward, drawing the belly button back, and then the right arm up to the sky. Again, a little challenge here if you wanna grab a hold Kicking the foot into the hand, opening, coming back down to your deep lunge, stepping forward, forward fold, good, and then coming down onto the mat, and we'll do our line position again here. So. Strapping up around your right foot, choking up. And then take the strap in your right hand, right leg opens out to the right, left leg is long. Just notice if you feel a little bit of a difference between the beginning and the end of class, it's not imperative, it's just fun to notice. Strap up now. Um, the left hand grabs the strap, left hip is moving away from, or the, sorry, the right hip is moving away from the right shoulder, rolling over to your left, looking over the right shoulder. Coming back up to center, releasing the strap, feeling the difference between your right and left side again. Perhaps the balance of our posture today has made the disparity between the right and left a little less noticeable at this point in our practice because hopefully we've got plenty of, of energy and breath uh, moving through the body more so than in the beginning of class where we're just maybe still a little sleepy. Um, a little stuck from the day. Pushing up now through the ball of the big toe. <sighs> Both legs are energized. Grab the strap with the left hand. Take the leg out to the left. If you're new to yoga, modifying as you go is the key. So if something doesn't feel right, just skip that. You can just sit and observe and then you know, okay, for next time that's the general shape. And we've switched now so that foot is out to the right side. But we certainly start to open up parts of the body that we haven't paid attention to in years if we haven't done this practice before because typically as adults, we're into a very routine set of movements in any given day. Even if, if you're a runner, there's still certain, certain muscles and um, ligaments and tendons that are being utilized, and sometimes the counter balance is um, unused. So now remove, remove the strap, coming into your Shavasana position here. Legs are out long. 
walk the shoulders in, palms are face up, and the back of the skull is releasing to the earth. So feel the bones of the body get heavy, but the organs and the, the front of the body is lifted and open. Notice where the mind starts to wander and then encourage the awareness to come back to the breath. That breath that's constantly ebbing and flowing. That's most of the time we just ignore it. But yoga brings us back to the gift of the breath. So finding this openness, this willingness to learn more about the body, the mind, the spirit, how they work together let the breath be the thing that ties that all together, unites us all. And as you inhale, inhale openness. As you exhale, let go of constriction. Inhale willingness. Exhale, stubbornness. Inhale, possibility. Exhale, limitations. Inhale, lightness. Exhale, darkness. Inhale, playfulness. Exhale, seriousness. Inhale, forgiveness. Exhale, resentment. Inhale, harmony. And exhale, competition. Breathe in what your body needs, what your spirit needs. Exhale out what it no longer needs, what's no longer serving you. Maybe what you even recognize as toxic or unhelpful. Find the equanimity, the sense of balance between the in and the out breath. And then slowly begin moving the fingers and the toes. And slowly begin to bend the knees and the elbows. Hugging the knees into the chest and rolling over onto the right side. And as you begin, take a couple breaths here in this sideways position. Know that you're, you're settling in. All of the benefits of this practice are settling into you as you take these last couple breaths from this sideways position. And then pushing the left hand into the earth, come up to a sideways seated posture. Notice we still keep that, that sense of equanimity, the sense of calm and peace that we've initiated here, keeping that so that we can go on into our day with a sense of balance and clarity. And I leave you with this idea, and sometimes I feel like I'm giving a commercial for yoga, but it is true, and there's a never-ending um, set of, of attributes that entice me about yoga and hopefully you too but have you ever noticed that some of us are strong but we need more opening and some of us are already more open and we need more strength here at yoga we we enhance both we create the strength and the opening at the same time so we let the inhale draw our strength up and in and the exhale releases as, as we extend we draw in the strength, the lift, the 
exhaling, we extend and let go. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So join me again next time. Thank you for being here. Blessings on your day.